much, uh, Benjamin and wo lovely worship team and the rest who are here. Thank you, Pastor Anand, Pastor Rachel, for your kind invitation. Actually, it's my third time uh, being here at FGA and also to join uh, all of you and to meet all of you. The last two days, we were together having a seminar and also we uh, met for prayer on Thursday. So I was very thrilled uh, to be back again. Uh, you are very blessed to have some of the nicest people on this earth uh, uh, <laughs> to serve you and also to be with you, how they meet you first thing in the morning and also first thing when you arrive. So praise God for everyone who serves the Lord here. I'm also reminded every time I come up that I'm God's servant and I'm supposed to introduce Jesus Christ, the Lord uh, Jesus, the same yesterday and forever. Now, when you came, you must have... Um, receive um, the handout for today. So if you have it, can you please wave to me uh, this handout? Yeah, it's meant for us to digest it. I hope you'll take it home uh, and then um, perhaps look at it, reflect, and uh, you can also write the sermon uh, following this. Okay, so we'll follow this sermon and then we want to also read the scriptures that are here, the three scripture passages here and I've called our a title for today, Living and Witnessing Reflections in a Pluralistic Society, which you can find in scriptures, where during the Old Testament time, New Testament time, people were living in a pluralistic society. So let's read together the first one, which is the Great Commission, a very familiar passage where the Lord Jesus commands the disciples, commands us, his believers, also to go into the world. Let's start. All authority, let's read together. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Let's uh, read together, dear brothers and sisters. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So that's a good reminder that when you are a disciple of Jesus, he encourages us, challenges us to go into all the world. And uh, we share the good news and he promised to be with us always. Now the second one is found in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. This is when Jesus has uh, ascended to heaven, but he also gives a promise. So let's read together, beginning with but. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So this is encouraging us to be a witness wherever we are here in Malaysia and we go to all parts of Asia and then finally to the outermost parts of the world. Now I've included another passage, maybe we don't read this so often or don't hear this being preached so often, but it's a passage that um, I was especially uh, inspired and encouraged when I was reading uh, Dr. Christopher Wright's book, Mission of God, and he was talking about this passage in 3 John, how that we need to be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the truth, and how uh, we are also sending out missionaries, which you see this happening in FGA. So let's read together. For I rejoice greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth, as indeed you are walking in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear my children are walking in the truth. So here ends the reading of God's word. May God bless the reading of his word to our hearts. Now as we think about what's happening in the world, perhaps we are also wondering, are we really relevant in this world? So I want to say yes. We are relevant in this world. And what do we do? We are living in this world, but we need to also be a witness. So turn to someone and say, you are God's witness. So let's all be challenged and encouraged to be God's witnesses here in um, Malaysia. And for me, uh, my home is in Singapore, but I've lived also in Africa, in East Africa, and also travel uh, to other parts of the world. So Jesus Christ tells us he's the way, the truth, and the life in John 14, 6. So as we think about the world and what's happening in the world, 
people are very curious to know why we call ourselves Christians and what is it that we do that, that we are different from others. And so let me try and click, click, click and say <laughs> to the screen, move to the next one. Okay, it did. So the greatest news that we have in the world is the Great Commission that Jesus has given to us, go into all the world. And so we must bring this message because the people who are of other religious groups, atheists, uh, coming out of New Age, and also cultic groups. Nowadays, when you go to any mall, you see uh, yoga being practiced, or you have a, a shop. Uh, I've seen them in different parts of the world. It says New Age or Precious Stones, and they are trying to promote the New Age teaching. But we are living for Christ, and we are witnessing for Christ. And so what, what is the best way that we can also be witnesses by sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. So God has given us the greatest message in the world. He has given us his one and only son, Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead. He died, he rose from the dead, he's alive. So we have this message. So let's carry this message and let's find out more as we think about living and witnessing. And what is this word that we rarely see, pluralistic? Now one of the ways is to take your hands and then slowly bring it together. And that's how you will remember a pluralist. A pluralist will say, all religions lead to God. And so when you meet someone and they say to you, oh, that's okay, I will accept Jesus Christ, also another religion. So you need to say, no, Jesus Christ is about a person who is the truth, the way, and the life. And so you share your testimony and you're able to be excited about sharing the good news. Now, when we think about uh, witnessing, we can either be a witness here in Malaysia to the people that are open. We can also be sent. The passage reminds us that we can be sent. But we can also be involved in giving and also in supporting the work of missions. Now, my country, Singapore, has been called the Antioch of the Far East. This was a prophecy that uh, Dr. Billy Graham the evangelist that has gone to most parts of the world tells us that uh, God gave that word when he came and many Malaysians, Indonesians and people all over the world came to that evangelistic crusade where every night we saw revival taking place. Individuals, their lives were saved and as a result, families came to know the Lord and churches were also revived. And during that event, I was doing counselling to children and youth and I was so excited when I hear, heard their testimony that God spoke to them. Many of them came forward. They said that they were seated so far away, they couldn't see Billy Graham's face. But they're going to come up and uh, see his face first. And then say to the counselor, yes, we are ready to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how many of you carried your Bible with you today? Maybe it's in your phone. Would you like to take out your Bible? Maybe it's the tablet. So we have the word of God. The greatest uh, message is found here. Now once there was an evangelist, he was so excited. Everywhere he went, he carried his Bible. And he lived in a country where there was open air evangelism and preaching. And he said, John 3.16. What is John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not die but have everlasting life. So he kept shouting. And then finally one day somebody from the crowd came out and said, Hey you, you're talking about me. He said, No, John 3.16. My name is John and I have three wives and 16 children. So you're actually talking about me. Oh, oh I better uh, show him another passage from the scriptures that talks about God's love and uh, that will emphasize the importance of salvation. So he began to teach from the book of Romans and says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And he was wondering, how should I explain how all have sinned? Okay. So whenever you're preaching, teaching about evangelism, you've got to think of in the light of that person, the background, and also the context of the scriptures. And that way, individuals will be excited 
to know what you have to say and that it is relevant. We also want to see the biblical basis that God's word is there to remind us of teaching, to share the good news. And we also want to uh, be reminded about how in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament, there were individuals who came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. For example, Nicodemus, he might be somebody of a different profession, but yet he made an effort to say, I want to go and speak to him. I want to meet Jesus face to face. And he did. He had an encounter with Jesus. And later, when you read the passage, you notice that he came to know the Lord. Then there was the Samaritan woman. She was from another race. And she did not come out uh, to join everybody in the socially or interact with people because she was morally not upright. But finally, she came on a day where Jesus made an attempt, we are told from the map, he deliberately went straight to Samaria to meet the Samaritan woman. So she asked questions about living waters. Who is this Messiah? Who is this Christ? Finally, Jesus revealed to her, I who am speaking to you is he, the Christ, the savior of the world. And she ran into the town and told everyone, come and see someone who has told me everything about myself. So the Samaritans were so excited, came, and they said, now we believe because we have heard and we have seen him for ourselves. So be excited about the sharing the good news. Ethiopian eunuch, we are told. And we are also told that he came uh, to the road and Philip was sent by the Holy Spirit preaching the gospel. And I've talked about some of these uh, individuals in this book, living and witnessing, and some copies are at the back with Annabelle. And you're welcome to um, take this book to study more, and I've named it Living and Witnessing, and also use this topic for today in our message. How can we use the examples of our conversion? So think of your testimony, how you have come to know the Lord. A few years ago, I was at a conference, and I met this woman called Sarah, and she is one of the directors for a center in India, in Bangalore, and it's called Center for Peace. So I had a discussion, a dialogue with uh, Sarah, and I, Sarah said, can I hear how you came out of Hinduism? Hinduism to become a Christian. I did write it in a book called uh, Heartbeat of a Missionary Church, and it's also found in your library, including um, other books on spiritual development and living and witnessing. So Sarah was listening, and uh, even though the seminar was about to begin, yet she was excited and she wanted to know more. And she said, can I have a book so that I can read more? So always get ready your testimony. And uh, on Friday, when we were having spiritual formation, we practiced our testimony in such a way that we could say it in one minute. Okay? As you share your testimony, get ready the date, the time, and where was it? that you pray to receive Christ. And I did that, and I shared my testimony. And I also put in the gospel. The three words you can remember as you think about the gospel. The three words are sorry, thank you, and please. Dear God, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. Thank you that you promised to cleanse me from my sins. And then the second word is thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ into the world to die on the cross for my sins. Thank you that he's alive. Please, Jesus, third word, come into my life today and be my friend and savior. So I had this opportunity to share with Shara my testimony. And then I re realized that when we look at a person, we need to look at a person in a holistic way, looking at their needs and then going on to their emotions, social background, morally, how are they doing? And finally, present the spiritual aspect, get to hear from them the struggles, and what are the questions that they have about the Christian faith. Now, we also want to realize that when we think about the pluralist who is struggling about their religion, struggling about their beliefs, we need to find out ways that we can make the Christian faith alive for them. So perhaps, I think finding out the differences between a pluralist and a believer will be helpful, and I mentioned that in the second point of my outline. And I remember one day, one of my Bible study members came to me and she said, 
You know, she said, I went on this tour. I've gone to so many tours after my work projects. And this was in Europe. She said, the tourist guide said, come on, everyone. Let's all come together. And let's gather here. So everybody came. And then he said, now, all of you pray. Pray to the God you believe. And she was just so shocked. She has never heard a tourist guide asking everyone to pray. But she used that opportunity to talk to everyone in that group, get to know them, and she asked them, who did you pray to? Did you get any answers? Who did you call upon to? And so that's when she found out some were Buddhists, some were Hindus, some were saying that the force, I just call on the force. Some say, oh, I call on the mountains. I'm one of those animistic, and then the one said, he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in any God. There's no God around here. So she had an opportunity to share the good news, and uh, she brought uh, booklets with her, and she was able to give them a copy of the Bible that they could read and forward uh, emails so that everyone can keep in touch with her. And I think that's very meaningful when you meet a pluralist, and uh, find out about them. So let's look at the differences between a pluralist and a Christian. Each time you meet a pluralist, the pluralist will say to you, you know, um, God is everywhere. You know, God created the mountains, so he's found here. You know, you have all this nature around, so God is found in here. And so this is where, as a believer, you need to share that. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. God was there in the beginning. So he's our creator. And we know that in the Old Testament, he's, he is Jehovah God. And God wanted to know what he, that we wanted to know what he looks like. So he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, into the world so that we can meet and know him. And he lived among man, us. He was man and he was also divine God. So share with them the, the loving God, the true God. And as you talk about the true and living God, you need to also share with them the person of Jesus Christ. When I was in school, I read history books about Jesus Christ. And if you go to any website, that stories and background and the, the Gospels tells you about Jesus Christ. But the pluralists will say, I don't believe in Jesus Christ. Who is he? Is he from another planet? Uh, what, what does he present that he's different? So you talk about how he's sinless. Okay, he died on the cross for our sins. Then the next area that you want to go on is to talk about sin. How we all were sinners when we were born into this world. And it's only by the blood of Jesus Christ that we are cleansed from our sins. And he can lift us up from sin and we become a child of God. Many years ago, my missions professor brought us to the city of Varanasi in India. And we saw the Ganges River for the first time. And people were coming and washing in the Ganges River. And it was, according to scientists, it's the most filthy river in the world. And by cleansing, they are saying that we are clean. Then on another occasion, I remember going to Israel and just behind was a mosque, behind the Wailing Wall. And the people there were also saying, by washing, you know, and before praying, we are also cleansed from our sins. So share with them. No, you, when you wash your sins, just temporarily you're clean. Every day we have to take a shower, but that's not enough. It's to do with your heart. Okay? A child doesn't have to be told, you, go, you know, uh, you did something wrong by stealing. A child just naturally wants to steal because we are born with sin. But the good news is Jesus died for our sins and we can be cleansed from our sins. So tell them the good news. Then finally go on to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ where they will struggle. And they were saying, are you sure he came back? Somebody said some time ago they saw their date parents or they saw a date person or they talked to a date person. That's hallucination. And people will get that when they lost a loved one. But say that this is recorded in scriptures, this is verified in the Bible, this is recorded in history, we have the site, we have archaeologists who also tell us, yes, he came back from the dead. 
So share the good news that we have a living God and that by watching the movie Passion of Christ, we learn about the person of Jesus Christ, how he suffered for us and how he was willing to die for us. And this is good news for those that I have shared. And you can also use examples. For example, I brought two objects here. This famous coffee found in Malaysia. And uh, you know, whenever you have this thirst for coffee or water, you take it out to drink. Okay, there's also water here. But this is just temporarily, you just get to drink. After that, you're thirsty again. So it's, it's like telling them, you know, you may be thirsty for a while, but who will clench your spiritual needs? It's only the risen Christ who died for us, who can clench, who can cleanse us and give us new life. Now, the other object that I brought is this one. It's a very powerful object. Can you guess what it is? It's my Singapore passport. <laughs> it's called the most powerful passport in the world. Recently, in the media, they were announcing it. Do you agree with me? It's the most powerful passport in the world. I have a few, actually, and I use it to countries that are close or travel ban restricted. So this passport will bring me. And by saying that, you know, I may have free entry, no need to pay any visa required, but one day, when the Lord Jesus comes again, how will I get to heaven to be with him? It's only when we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior. And in missions too, I do carry another passport. It's called OCI, Overseas Citizen of India. And it says visa for life, multiple entries. Wow, how exciting. And I have an international driving license from Singapore. No expiry date. Isn't that wonderful? All your driving license have got expiry dates. But one day, it will come, a time will come, and we will all be caught and be with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. So our human dates are limited. Finally, as we think about the importance of living and witnessing, one of the ways, I believe, is to enter into a dialogue where we, with the gentleness of Christ, will continue to share, persuade, and tell the pluralist. Just as Apostle Paul, ordinary person like all of us, he interacted with a king, King Agrippa, and you can read about it in the book of Acts. And King Agrippa said, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. I believe the pluralist can say, I am now persuaded to become a Christian. So by God's grace, you can do it. And with God's strength, you can continue to be his witness. And so I did that together with Sarah and others who were living there, wanted to hear the good news. There was a woman actually just outside this research center where I was. She was walking her dog regularly and she was also going into the temples. And as I walked with her one day, the dusty roads, she said to me, how can I get peace? I don't have any peace. So as we walked, and I shared with her the good news. Well, Jesus is the only one who says, peace I give unto you. So that's a way that you can continue your dialogue by interacting and sharing with them and also listening to them. In dialogues, we interact with each other. We also listen to the other person. We do not attack them, but we answer their questions. And then when the opportunity comes, share with them the good news, give them the answers. God has used many Asians as missionaries. Sadhu Sundar Singh, who was a persecutor of Christians, but later he became a preacher. And then there's um, John Sung, medical doctor from China. God used him mightily to different parts of Asia. And then there were the Moravian missionaries from Germany. They were willing to go to West Africa where people died of malaria, but he's, they said, no, we must still go because they are waiting for the good news. So pe missionaries, individuals have given their lives for the Lord Jesus Christ. We can also do that. So what is our message for us today in the Asian church? 
a church that is full of missions and with a heart for missions like FGA is alive. So may we continue to be alive wherever God sends us and wherever he wants to lead us. He can use us here in Malaysia. He can use us in Asia. He can also take us to South America where Elizabeth Elliot went as a missionary. Other parts of India where Amy Carmichael went as a missionary. And finally, I believe that whatever your age, as young as you are, and uh, before you reach 99 or 100 years, you can still be a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can go to all the foreign workers who are here and also remember there was one day I was in uh, Kenya, Nairobi, and I walked up the hill with my students and we came down the hill and we saw all these people living in the caves. We have never seen them and I called them the forgotten ones. And I said to them, has anyone come and shared good news with you? You're living all here by yourself. They know what is the good news? So think of all the forgotten ones in your neighborhood, in your university, in your place of work, and go and share with them the good news. So are we living? Are we witnessing? Let's ask ourselves this question. How then shall we go? The how was the Lord Jesus Christ so white, full of, full of needs? And the moment you say to the Lord, here am I, send me, God can use you. As we come to the close, let's think of the two questions that I've listed on your handout for reflection. First is, how does a church measure up the picture of a living and witnessing community? We are here in FGA, FGA Youth Ministry, and it's so exciting when I see the youth. Some years ago, a group of young people went to Taiwan, and this uh, group went into a church where every day people go by to go to the river. So I said, why do people go by to go to the river? And they said, we found out, according to a study, they go to the river to commit suicide. And it was this church that rescued them. They are regularly singing, making their doors open, and people will stop when they see the sign, God is love, and God loves you. So say to one another, God loves you, God is love. And as a result, our families, individuals, step into the church and heard the good news. And now the suicide rate has been reduced. So I praise God for this group of young people, and I wrote about their testimonies in one of my research articles, and also in a, a recent book. So God can use each one of you, young people, to go to the outermost parts of the world. The second question for reflection is, what are the ways that you see yourself as living and witnessing? This is living and witnessing in obedience to God's will. And you have a testimony, you must share your testimony. Before the year end, talk to one person about the good news of Jesus Christ. Tell them that you have come to know the Lord and you have the greatest message in the world. And I think that will be very powerful. Now, two young people were traveling one day and they said, let's meet um, for a discussion first before we travel. And uh, why not we meet at the railway station and then I will carry on with my conference. So they met at the railway station and they talk and talk and talk and discuss and discuss. And they look at their phone and the tablet. And finally, the whistle went and the train is pulling out. And one of them said, oh no, I got to uh, catch the train. And they, they, they both ran, and, um, but one managed to get on the train. Then the uh, train master came and said, what happened? Your friend got on the train. What happened to you? Oh, no, that's the problem. He's not traveling. I'm the one who's traveling. So, you know, don't miss the train wherever you go. Your friend is confused how to catch the train for you. You're not even getting on. But be responsible, be creative, and rejoice in the good news of Jesus Christ. I would also like to write, read a reflection written by one of the church fathers and uh, that we will also feel for the pain of individuals 
who are going through crisis. And this is taken from the Gospel of Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 15. This is a very familiar passage where the woman had come to Jesus' feet. And you just imagine this scene. Imagine that you're one of the observers. There's this group of people who are very critical and um, condemning, judgmental, and there's Jesus who's ministering to them. But suddenly somebody comes into their presence and she's called very sinful. And so this is a contemplation. The writer Nixia said, the Pharisee's house, comfortable, well-arranged, the room where the dinner take place, the table in the center, there are many guests, the servants bringing food, and Jesus is there. I'm living each moment. A woman of the city who is a sinner, I see her. I see her clothing, her makeup. I smell her perfume. I see her alone. She's been scorned, shunned, ostracized. I can feel with great respect, I contemplated the stirrings of her heart. I sense an overpowering need for my heart too knows that great need. She has heard about a new teacher, one who eats with sinners, who chose to be with the poor and informed. A new hope has awakened in her and in me. She knows that to enter the Pharisee's house uninvited, unwanted, she'll be rejected. She hears the words, If this man were a prophet, he would know. Yet she draws near because of a great hope. She comes to the feet of Jesus as he, like all the other guests, reclined at the table. She says nothing. But her tears fell. I ponder those tears. I look at her. I look at Jesus. I see the eyes. She dries his feet with her hair. She kisses his feet. She breaks the ointment. She anoints them with the ointment. I'm there. I see. I smell. I feel. Now I hear the words of Jesus. First, he's talking to Simon, the Pharisee. Simon, I have something to say to you. Do you see this woman? For she loves much. But, and your sins are forgiven. Jesus said that to the woman. And then he said, go in peace. I open my heart to hear the Lord speak those words now to me. I speak to him also from my heart. Let's also have now a moment of silence, meditation, as we think about the words, living and witnessing to the many who are waiting for the good news and also God's word of forgiveness to sinners, those who have never come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. They are being forgiven. They are also um, rejoicing in the good news. And after that, uh, Pastor Allen will come in. Close us in prayer. This afternoon as we reflect, the topic today was something that I wrote to Dr. Suraja and asked her to share, living and witnessing. Simply because before this, we have been hearing a lot about catching the vision and to evangelize and disciple. And we talked so much about that we must share, that we will go back to our new friend database and we will share the a gospel and we've been equipped and explained over and over again about the five finger and seeing our friends come to know and we heard testimony last Wednesday Li Fang went to share her testimony about her parents coming to know God 
But this topic today is for me to challenge you that as we continue with this vision that is ahead of us, that we are to live and to be a witness. And so the challenge is, are we today living and that is to live for Christ and only when we live for Christ, we become a fruitful and an effective witness. And so this afternoon, I want to challenge you. For many of you who are looking forward for your school holiday, when tomorrow starts, your new church is Mid Valley. And for some of us who are um, in the midst of sitting for your SPM, where all life is dependent on it, because the moment you fail SPM, that's the end of your life. And so you're so desperate for God, suddenly you are on fire for Jesus. Praise God for that. But some of us who are in the workplace, day in and day out, what is the purpose of this life? And only when we really live and we are living, whether it's a school holiday, whether it's an exam, whether it's a work, whether that I have something ahead of me. And when Jesus Christ is the center and put Him as my priority, then witnessing comes naturally because the work of convincing people is the work of the Holy Spirit. And so this afternoon, I want to challenge us and felt to pray for a few group of people. Number one, do we have friends today that you do not know what is the purpose of your life? And simply because you do not know Jesus Christ. You could have been a Christian all your life, but you're not sure why you're coming to church. You're not sure why we are doing this. And everything is just going as, as it is with no purpose May I this afternoon just share with you that only our true faith in Jesus Christ can give us this purpose with God and only having God, we find meaning to our life. So whether we are working as an accountant, whether we work as a teacher, whether we sit for exam, whether we enjoy our holidays, whether we just look forward for tomorrow because I have God, therefore I have purpose and when I live, I live for Christ. So perhaps this afternoon we have friends here who are not sure you are not sure who you are living for. You are not sure why you are living. You are not sure what is your purpose. May I share with you, eternal life is a free gift. Eternal life is not something we deserve or something that we can earn. God give us free gift and that gift is eternal life. But man cannot receive this eternal life because man has sinned. The Bible says that all men has sinned. Whether you think bad thoughts today, whether you are not living to the standard. And the standard is perfect. God's standard of living is perfect. Nobody can ever be perfect. And therefore, all men has sinned against God because we can never be perfect. And so God, who loved us so much, God, who is so merciful, but yet He is just. He cannot tolerate sin. He cannot accept sin. And therefore God sacrificed Himself in Jesus Christ where love and justice meet. And Jesus takes all our sins away. And now through Jesus Christ, we can receive this eternal life. This morning, this afternoon, can I ask, do we have friends here? You do not know this God. You have not received this eternal life. And this, this afternoon after listening, is there a purpose? Is there more to life? And you would like to make this decision. 
and you would like to receive Jesus Christ. And it's okay if you've been a Christian all your life, you've been coming to church, but you're not sure. You're not sure that if today, that if today, let's say, let's say today, if you were to die, will you be with God in heaven? And so this afternoon, I would like to ask this question. Do we have friends here today? Do we have anyone here today who would like to make the decision that you want to receive Jesus into your heart as a personal Lord and Savior? So can I ask all our YM members, could you turn to your neighbor and ask them, do you want to receive Jesus? Do you want to receive and know this God? Would you like to receive this free gift, this eternal life? Can you just turn to them and, and, and do me a favor? Nobody being left out. Just ask this question. Do you, like, do you want to receive God? And if they say yes, could you put up your right hand up so that we can come and pray with you and encourage you and cheer you on? Do we have anybody today? You could be Christian all your life, but you're not sure. You don't have the saving faith. The only faith that brings us back to God. So is there anybody here? Can you quickly raise your hand? Do we have friends here who would like to receive Jesus? Could you put up your hand? Do we have anybody here? So you have asked everyone and you have talked to your neighbor and thank God everybody has eternal life today. Let's give yourself a big hand. Shall we stand? Shall we stand? I want to pray because I have a strong impression for to the Christian here. I want to open the altar at the count of three. You're not sure of your purpose. You do not know what you are living for. And you would like to seek God. And you would like to know what is my purpose. Only when you have a purpose, you will be an excellent witness. So at the count of three, we have members or friends here and you would like to know, yes, pastor, please pray with me. I want to know what is my purpose. I don't have a purpose. I do not know why I'm sitting for exam. I do not know why I'm going to work. I do not know why, you know, uh, what am I going to do for this holiday? I'm just clueless. If that's you, the altar is open. We, will, I, uh, we want to pray with you. So at the count of three, one, two, three. Do we have any friends? Do you have any members? You want us to pray with you? The altar is open. You can come in, friend.
specific person is there someone here to, today uh, it could be your desire and your desire is that you want to teach or in the field of education and you have this desire that you know I want to teach people the right thing the right way and if you have that uh, desire of uh, in this field of education and you have this 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 desire yes I want I want to be that teacher I want to teach and help people is there anybody like here with that desire can can I pray with you thank you can you come I'm gonna ask our leaders to stand here I want to pray for one more person I want to pray for one more person there's another young person here you have such desire that in your heart in your heart you are just compassionate towards those who nobody wants to talk to nobody wants to spend time with maybe they can be you know financially not doing well maybe they are just the outcast but you have a, such a desire in your heart that God has put that you want to be that person if nobody wants to talk to I want to talk to this person if nobody wants to help them I want to be that person to help them if that's you could you come in front do we have that that's you amen is there one more can, can I invite our leaders could you come in front have one last one that we shared in first service is there a young person here you just like to travel and you enjoy traveling but I felt that God has put in my heart to say that you know with this desire that you like to travel that you're going to be traveling with a purpose and Dr. Suraja is one of the example you know who travels and touch people's life as she travels and make impact is there a young person with such desire maybe I could be wrong but if that's you could you come up in front also you just like to travel is there anyone with that desire and so we want to pray with you that when you travel that you will touch people's life everywhere you go. Shall we close our eyes and let me close this um, session with prayer and then we have announcement. Father, this afternoon we thank you. We thank you that you are a God who give us purpose. And this afternoon we thank you that God, your purpose is that we live to honour you and to glorify you. And as we step out in faith and receive dreams, that you give us dreams, and that God, that you grow this desire in our heart for your glory, for your purpose. May we always honour you, and may we always please you, O oh God, in all that we do, in all that we live, O oh God, we live for the glory of God. And so this afternoon, I pray that in Jesus' name, that you will continue to encourage us, that you will continue, oh God, to inspire us, that Lord, you are faithful even when we are not. And so that you, God, you will guide us and continue to lead us in the destiny you have for us. And so every young person in this place has a destiny with God. And our destiny with you, oh God, has great purpose it comes with great commission it is a great purpose for the great God for his great glory and so God this afternoon we thank you we bless you as we commit this time into your hands we pray that God throughout this week you will continue to minister to us and continue to speak to us in Jesus name we pray amen
Uh, can I invite all of you to be seated? As we like to go to the time of our weekly announcements. With this week's announcement, our first announcement, in which we have some family news that we like to share with all of you. Uh, one of our YM members, Iris Young, passed away last Thursday morning. And so as YM, as a family, we would like to support Daniel and Ruby Young and their family in prayer. So we'd like to ask for all of you to keep their family in prayer. And for our second announcement, we have our weekly prayer service which is on Wednesday at the main century from 8 to 9.30. And on Thursday, we have our YM prayer meeting, which is at the Horeb room, which is above the main century. And it's from 8 to 9.30 or so. And the next announcement, we have a video that we'd like you to pay attention to, which will come up on the screen. We have our we have our Christmas service that will be coming up shortly as you have seen the three dates that's up yeah now Christmas is only six weekends away it's definitely one of the most wonderful time of the year it's the time that we are all await for now this year for our church the Generations Ministry will be spearheading Christmas and is YM is part of the Generations Ministry if you are not aware and hence we will be involved with the Christmas service one way or the other. Sorry. Now, what makes Christmas special for us is that it's our biggest opportunity to share with others the true meaning of Christmas. Now, as this is the biggest evangelistic event for us as a church, I'd like to encourage all of us to start praying and thinking about who we would like to invite for Christmas. As you can see from the video, we have a special youth night on the 23rd December where we can invite all your friends and family members to attend. Now as YM, we have a promise to claim and all of us must play our part by responding it in faith. So let's all go out to invite our family members and friends this, eve, this Christmas and expect God to do great things. Yeah? Now, and the next announcement would be next week. Our speaker for our YM services will be none other than our beloved Pastor Anand. So I hope that you'll be looking forward for that. And lastly, on the 26th of November will be our CG Sunday. So do look forward for these two services. We look forward to see you there. And with that, the service has ended. God bless and have a great week ahead of you.